fantasy football show. It's the premier Madden League fantasy football show, and I am here with my partner in crime. Go ahead and introduce yourself to the folks. Hey guys, it's Fallen. How's everybody doing? Uh, we're here again with your weekly fantasy show. So definitely uh, be paying attention to uh, everything that we're talking about. You know, definitely going to help you with your lineups. Um, we want to make sure everybody is uh, setting themselves up for success. Yep, uh, exactly. And uh, we got one waiver claim. Uh, I'm going to announce it on the show. Uh, Seahawks user uh, Mally Rojo uh, dropped DJ Moore of the Panthers, and he picked up Anthony McFarlane, the uh, the running back that's going to be taking over for the injured C.J. Verdell in that Pittsburgh Steelers offense. So that was an interesting move by him. Um, I know Verdell is going to be out for three to four weeks, so hopefully during those three to four weeks, um, uh, McFarland could get him a lot of uh, a lot of points in that lineup. Yeah, I, I think that was a pretty smart lineup, this, uh, lineup roster move because uh, Moore doesn't look like he's doing much on the Panthers, so I don't think he's really missing him out. Yeah, and I'm going to take out Moore, as you can see on the screen. I'm gonna edit his lineup to, to show Anthony McFarland. So a, a nice little pickup for him. Um, I mean, he's got he's got plenty of running backs. So I guess he wants to go with another one just in case. And I'll uh, I'll edit the rest of that. But that's going to be his new, one of his new toys to play with, uh, one of the new toys to plug into the lineup. Uh, but let's get into the matchups this week. So we had Natural versus Mally Rojo. Natural went with Lamar Jackson. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, C.J. Verdell, Juju Smith-Schuster, Tyreek Hill, Noah Font, uh, Noah Fant, uh, Rico Gafford, Tucker McCann, uh, the Raiders defense, and then on Mali Rojo's side, you see uh, Tua, then you got Todd Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott, uh, Trey Nixon, D.J. Moore, Jonu Smith, Am Ross St. Brown, Robbie Gold, and the Vikings defense. Uh, and we talked right before this week, uh, we mentioned the buys and for people to start paying attention. And right away, we see someone that has two players in their lineup that were on buys this past week. Uh, Mally Rojo had Trey Nixon, Trey Nixon and Am Ross St. Brown. Uh, both uh, teams had a buy, the Lions and the Patriots. So right away, you see it, uh, somebody not really paying attention to the uh, the line. Uh, their lineup in the schedule uh, for PML because that's zero points for two players. Uh, yeah, that's a good call out. And actually, um, both of these two uh, guys had someone who was on a bye week. Tucker McCann plays for the Lions. Mm -hmm. He's a kicker for the Lions. So just kind of a, a gloss over there. Um, but matchup wise, I think Mally would have been able to take this one had he just pretty much played anybody who was um, able to give him some points. I mean, he still has John and Smith. Um, mm -hmm. I know that game's going on right now. Mm -hmm. yep, He'd just give him, you know, uh, 25 points to, to kind of win the game here. So it's definitely possible because, you know, the Titans like to target their tight end. But, um, you know, having two players that gets you zero points is, you know, you're never really going to win with that so exactly. we just want to make sure everybody's paying attention yeah to their lineups yeah exactly as you see with this game you know had you just had somebody in there that uh could give you some points uh, i think mally would have been able to take this one um yeah uh when it comes to the kickers too uh you mentioned tucker mccann um, I'm one of those that I won't drop a player to add another kicker. I'd rather take the zero points that week from the kicker spot than drop somebody, uh, mm -hmm. a depth guy, maybe a running back wide receiver that I have on my roster just in case somebody goes down. I'd rather just take the zero that week from the kicker and hope my uh, normal position players, you know, uh, make up for that. Um, but speaking of his lineup, um, Lamar Jackson, I mean, he's looking like a – MVP candidate uh, in the PML this season. I mean, he's doing both in the air and on the ground. I mean, not crazy passing yards, but he did have three passing TDs. And then he also had almost uh, just shy of 50 yards rushing with a touchdown. So Lamar Jackson's looking like an early MVP for the league. 
Yeah, no, that's a really good call out. And I think Jackson is doing more on the ground than he is to the air. <clears throat> He's got uh, five touchdowns already on the ground um, and 258 yards rushing. Uh, you know, he's got almost a thousand yards passing and eight touchdowns, but he's got eight interceptions. So he's a dual threat quarterback and we can see why natural took him with his first pick overall. He's definitely scoring 20 plus points a week. So he's one of those guys that, you know, you can count on every, every single week. Um, so I think during the draft, we kind of looked at that, like, hmm, maybe that was a, you know, not a, a good pick first off, but you know, so far so good. Yeah, exactly. Uh, looking real good uh, in the quarterback position. Definitely a position he won't have to worry about uh, replacing until bye week. Uh, he seems to keep rolling with Lamar, and Lamar seems to keep paying off. Uh, but I see Natural probably sticking with the lead. Uh, I know the uh, Titans, they're actually up pretty big right now. Um, actually, it's a little closer than it was. It's 24-13. to 13. I don't see them throwing a, throwing a lot. I see them ground and pound with Derrick Henry, who's running all over the field right now. So I don't see Johnu Smith getting uh, much points, never mind uh, getting 23 to uh, mm -hmm. complete a comeback here. So I see Natural uh, getting the win in this week. How about you? Yeah, just looking at it, and, and especially I didn't uh, know the, the score or anything, um, the update there. So it's nice for anybody who... You know, isn't actively or can't actually watch the game. Um, so, but yeah, I don't, I don't see John Smith being able to get him that many points. Maybe yeah. ten would be reasonable, but I think that's a stretch there. So yeah, I and think, if you uh, natural has it in the bag. Yeah, and it shows it, it puts emphasis on you know making sure your guys aren't on bye weeks because he definitely could have came out with a win like you said. Um, let's move that's on. Right. Let's move on to geeked versus FK. Uh, Geeked went with Dwayne Haskins, Nick Chubb, Alvin Kamara, uh, Marquise Brown, Jakeem Grant, Darren Waller, Marquise Goodwin, Josh Lambeau, uh, the Bears defense, and then on the other side you had Russell Wilson, Najee Harris, Kenyon Drake, uh, Preston Williams, Jamar Chase, Cole Komet, uh, Kenneth Gain uh, Gainwell, uh, Jason Sanders, and the Texans defense. Uh, when you look at the... Uh, the lineup for Geek, he had a uh, pretty solid front, uh, pretty solid running backs and one wide receiver. Uh, both had over 20 points. Uh, Alvin Kamara is absolutely on a tail, uh, tear ever since they, we got a new Saints user. He's been uh, using Alvin Kamara pretty thoroughly. I mean, he's, he's becoming a uh, top fantasy threat. I, I like Alvin Kamara, especially in that, that offense that's being run over in New Orleans right now. Yeah, no, I agree. And looking at this matchup, uh, you know, neither of the teams scored a lot of points, but FK and JP, his, his roster really let him down. Um, mm -hmm. You know, having pretty much everybody in there and outside of one player and you're only scoring 68 points, that's, that's definitely tough. And I think um, looking at Geek's roster, uh, you know, we had Marquise Goodwin on our um, set -em list last week, and I think this was the first week that he actually really produced for Geek. So it was mm -hmm. surprising to see him start him, but I definitely think he benefited from it because Goodwin had three catches for 38 yards and a touchdown. So, uh, you know, it goes to show that even if some guys aren't producing every week, you know, any given week, they can get you some points. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing with FK's lineup, like uh, you mentioned, that it was a tough week. The big part of that was he had Travis Etienne as his running back one, and he had to replace him with Najee Harris because of a uh, disconnect. And I I played against Travis Etienne, so it was, I was playing the Jags, and he ran all over me. I think he had like two or three touchdowns, and it would have been a big payday for uh, FK. But unfortunately, Madden being the shit box it is when it comes to franchise mode, um, had us disconnect and we had to rerun it. So all the stats from that game are pretty much lost in translation. So those those stats won't help him this week, and at the end probably would have gave him a win if uh, if I'm being frank on it. Um, he had he had a ton of points. 
So, you know, it sucks when that happens, but, you know, you got to roll with the punches. Same thing with Josh Lambeau on the other side. He, uh, I asked him if he wanted to re replace Josh Lambeau. He said it's all right. I mean, he'll take zero from the kicker. He, he, he thinks he'll be fine uh, either way. And uh, Jakeem Grant had zero on the other side as well, but he actually played and is not being used in that Dolphins offense. Um, but, yeah, at the end, could have been a big difference for FK. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And Etienne already has, uh, he, you know, he has five touchdowns of the season. His yardage isn't that high, but he definitely uses him. Um, you know, so that's that's a miss there, um, which is unfortunate. And then with Jakeem Grant, uh, I played against the Dolphins this week, and he he likes to um, go underneath a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't notice any real deep shots. You know, a guy like Jakeem Grant, you think he'd at least try it uh, a couple times a game. You know, see what happens and. Um, I was surprised to see that. So maybe Grant's a guy you look at seeing, hey, is he worth the roster spot going forward? Yeah, I, I, I agree on that. Jakeem Grant's not the same weapon he was back in Madden 20 when uh, he belonged to uh, Cookie Boy. Uh, let's jump into mm -hmm. the next uh, game. It's actually Drama versus yourself. Uh, Drama went with Derek Carr, Dalvin Cook, Derek Henry, T.Y. Hilton, Amari Cooper, Hunter Henry, Julio Jones, Sam Sloman, uh, in the football team's defense. And then on your side, you got Justin Herbert, Austin Eckler, Aaron Jones, uh, Michael Thomas, Stefan Diggs, Evan Ingram, Miles Sanders, Brett Mayer, and then the Steelers defense. Um, on the side of drama, I don't think he had anybody on a bye week on in its lineup. Um... I don't see one person. I know Hunter Henry played, and he just didn't get any points. And Derrick Henry is going off right now. So uh, that point total could definitely climb to over 100. But I don't think he's going to catch you in this game because you have over 143 points right now. Austin Eckler had a great game. Um, you had a good game from Herbert. You also had a good game from Evan Ingram, uh, who finally showed up this week. Uh, you did have one guy that was on a bye, but um, I kind of give you, uh, just like myself, I kind of give you the uh, the okay because, you know, we get a lot to do when entering points and all that and then worry about our fantasy lineup. So one one guy on a bye here and there isn't the end of the world, especially when you, <laughs> we're doing so much behind the scenes work. Yeah, no, and that was just a, a slight misoverlook. I, I thought I subbed him out and... Uh, it just didn't go through. So, um, you know, I actually take the blame there. But thankfully, my team produced. And I got to uh, give a shout out to Hype Mike. He, he beat the Chiefs 69 to 24 and absolutely de uh, demolished uh, the Chiefs with Eckler and Justin Herbert. So, 213 yards uh, rushing and three touchdowns for Eckler. Um, he's looking really solid, like a really great pickup for me. I think he's, he's consistently scoring points. Um, and then, you know, uh, my team so far this, this year, uh, it's kind of been up and down. I think w with this, I definitely think I'll be able to pull out the win. Yeah. Unless Henry just like, gets like seven touchdowns for like 300 <laughs> yards, which I mean, yeah, I don't think they'll get something crazy like that, but, um, you know. And that doesn't have, that doesn't happen in PML. You won't get that. Um, right. but I just, I just did watch, uh, Derek Henry go into the end zone uh, for his second or third score of the game. And I know he has mm -hmm. close to 200 yards, so he's having a good game. But like you said, he's going to have to have, um, uh, a, a crazy game to, uh, to, um, you know, catch, catch you at this point. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he'd have to, yeah, when uh, there's no, have, go ahead. Yeah. He'd have to set single game season, uh, Single game records. Yeah, it might. The the, the the type of stats he needs is it might lead to a boot from the league if he if he ended up getting those. Um, yeah. But when when you're talking about your team, uh, you mentioned the Chargers, and it seems like you got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, what's the saying? Um, not ducks in a row, but a lot of eggs in one basket. Yeah, a lot of eggs in one basket. Um, when the Chargers are going, you're going. But if the Chargers aren't going, it seems like that would be a down week for you based on how many uh, Chargers you have. Well, the Chargers that you have in your lineup are in key positions, the mm -hmm. running back one and then also your quarterback. 
Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And um, when I when I took, I believe I took Eckler before I took Herbert, but with the quarterbacks that were available at the spot that I took Herbert, I just kind of looked at it like, well, last season Herbert, um, I think almost led the uh, league in passing yards. So um, I figured you know, he would at least be up there. So, um, and, you know, Herbert will be, throw into Eckler, you know, so eventually, you know, they don't really cancel each other out. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think actually Herbert had uh, this game, he had two rushing touchdowns, which I typically don't see from him, but um, that's where he got most of his points, his past and stats were kind of low. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting how, you know, when the Chargers do have their bye week, who I can get in there, but I'm confident with the guys that I have on my roster that I'll be able to kind of plug and play there. Yeah, and uh, I think you're, you're going to move to 3-1 and one after this this week with that um, one right there. But let's uh, move on to the next one. We got uh, myself, Nefarious, up against Burn. Uh, I went with Trey Lance, Bryce Love, Saquon Barkley, uh, Terry McLaurin, uh, Rondale Moore, uh, Alan Lazard, uh, Bryce Love. Bryce Love was twice in my lineup. Just like you, I have a little uh, oversight there. Then I had Justin Tucker as my kicker in the Colts defense. On the other side, we had Baker Mayfield, Rashad Penny, Naheem Hines, uh, Will Fuller the fifth, uh, AJ Brown, Austin Hooper, DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Badgley, and then the Chargers defense. And I see you entering stats for Trey Lance right now. Um, I had over a hundred and fifty points prior to Trey Lance. Uh, Trey Lance's stats, and it looks like he's gonna add. More, he's going to add over 20 points to my score, so I'm over, up to 182. And you also have Alan Lazard to enter, but I don't think he had a good mm-hmm. game. I think he had like a couple receptions for like 20 yards or something like that. Yeah, he did. He had two for uh, 19. Um, yeah, so if, if you weren't paying attention to the chat or anybody who wasn't, Trey Lance did have a breakout game. And I believe uh, the Saints uh, coach missed it um, because he ended up throwing uh, interception, I think, in the fourth quarter with a few, like, under a minute left. I think he said he was trying to get it to Alvin Kamara, who was wide open, but he got hit mm-hmm. and ended up throwing a pick, which actually almost cost him that game. Um, that led them into overtime when, it, had he had just run the ball, uh, probably forward and kicked the field goal, he would have won it. Ultimately, he won in overtime, but, you know, uh, when you step back to pass, you know, anything can happen. And unfortunately, he won He won the game, but unfortunately, he lost his depth story because with the QB depth stories, uh, you got to get a good amount of passing yards, but you can't throw any interceptions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, he lost his depth story, um, which sucks, but he, he had a decent game for me all, all in all. Mm-hmm. I made 26 points. I, I won't cry about that. Um, Tom Brady wasn't really performing for me as well. Um, I mean, the whole lineup had a, a great week. Uh, you don't get 186 points without, you know, having crazy weeks from almost every position. Uh, I think the only guy that had a bad week was Alan Lazard, and I didn't really expect much from him. Um, I wasn't getting anything out of TJ Hawkinson because he was obviously on a bye this week, so I needed the tight end in that spot, so I wasn't really worried about that. But um, thankfully, mostly everybody else in my lineup went off. And it's not really a, a good week, uh, a good matchup and a good week for um, for Byrne on the other side. Uh, he only gets 82 points. Not really going to beat much, but I outscored him by 100 points. Uh, Baker Mayfield seems to be the only guy that got him a ton of points. Uh, Naheem Hines is playing right now. Um, DeAndre, Hopkins. DeAndre Hopkins. Yep, DeAndre Hopkins is also playing right now. And then A.J. Brown is playing right now. So he's got three more guys mm-hmm. to uh, get points off of, but I, th- there's no way he's going to he's gonna catch me. No, that 186 points, that is uh, that is really good. I think that's one of the highest scores we've seen in fantasy. I think the only guy who really let you down was Alan Lazard, and, and then uh, you had Bryce Love in there twice, but you didn't really need another guy there. You would have probably had over 200 points. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think, you know, your defense, um, the Colts defense, and, you know, we predicted that because he went up against the Rams, so he was one of our stardoms um, last episode. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I know he went up against, uh, that was the prior week. He, um, 
So he went against the. Oh uh, yeah, what's my name? I'm thinking. Yeah, so we kind of predicted that, and I, I, not even I would have expected 27, but he did get two defensive touchdowns, so you know that gives him uh, 12 points there. Plus he had a good bit of sacks and interceptions. Yeah, for so anybody. That was a definitely a good pickup. Yeah, and for anybody watching, if you want to, uh, you know, switch out defenses, I mean, you can make a waiver claim every week and drop and add a defense mm-hmm. and just play matchups all year. If you're playing the Rams or the Chiefs, uh, maybe even the Broncos or even myself, you got a de- decent defense on the other side. Uh, would it be hurt? It wouldn't hurt to play them because you know the turnovers are gonna come and you could get a pick six, pick six here and there. So that's why I went with the Colts. I saw the matchup and uh, I definitely fell in love with that. And the Lions were also on a buy for me, so I was like, you know, I gotta get a defense. So I had a few guys I could spare, and that w- that's what led to me getting the Colts defense. So I'm happy about my score. Um, I'm gonna I'm still undefeated on the season, luckily. I think I had a couple bad weeks in there, but unfortunately, it didn't really affect my record yet. Um, on those bad weeks, I had a bad, uh, even worse matchup on the other side or an even worse uh, week on the other side than my own week. Uh, let's jump into LQ Noble versus Q. Uh, we got Patrick Mahomes, DeAndre Swift, Tony Pollard, Demir Bird, Brandon Cooks, Mike Gusecki, uh, Jalen Rieger, uh, Joey Sly, Browns defense. And then you take a look at Q, he's got Deshaun Watson, Matt Breida, Javion Hawkins, Devontae Adams, Rashad Bateman, uh, Eric Ebron, Odell Beckham Jr., Will Lutz, and the Patriots defense. So both these guys um, kind of got a warning. Uh, they were both on my warning list mm-hmm. along with Mally Rojo. Um, they had multiple players on both sides that were on bye weeks. On the one side, you had Demir Bird and DeAndre Swift. And then on the other side, you had uh, Devontae Adams and the Patriots defense. Now, mm-hmm. uh, LQ is probably the closest to a chopping block than compared to Q himself. Because LQ is not only underperforming, but he, I mean, not only putting guys that would buys in the lineup, but he's also not really changing his lineup that's been underperforming. I think he's got the lowest points in the whole league, and it's by a lot, and it's not even close. So um, not sure if he's fully invested in the fantasy stuff. Uh, we'll see going forward, but he's 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 on the chopping block as of right now, um, and he's the closest to getting the boot, uh, if I'm being frank about it. Yeah, and we kind of see, we talk about Patrick Mahomes almost every week, and, you know, the Chiefs are having a rough season. Uh, here's, again, Patrick Mahomes. Negative, negative points. points. Yeah. Um, and, you know, looking at this Chargers-Chiefs matchup, uh, uh, if I'm LQ Noble, I would have never started Mahomes. I mean, that's just, you know, you're, you're not expecting much. Maybe against a, a little easier matchup, if it's playing the Rams or, even the Broncos, um, you know, maybe the Raiders. Uh, but, you know, putting somebody in there who's consistently getting negative points, that's, uh, that's not a good look. And then everybody else, I think his highest player got him 11 points, So, which actually was Brandon Cooks, which was another guy who I wasn't necessarily producing the first couple of weeks, but he had a decent game this, mm-hmm. uh, you know, this week. So, I mean, in yeah, I can't fault him for starting Brandon Cooks, though. You know, he can he can definitely fly down the field, and he was a thousand yard receiver last season. So, and uh, Patrick Mahomes was actually a replacement because he couldn't play uh, Trevor Lawrence, who seems to be a decent quarterback. So, um, mm-hmm. I can't really fault him on Patrick Mahomes, uh, but be- DeAndre Swift and Demir Bird. I mean. You gotta you gotta pay attention. And Demand Bird's not having the same season that he did last year, um, so yeah. there's really no excuse for that. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Uh, there's plenty of guys in waivers to try to pick up. Uh, Ty Chandler's out there for a running back, and I mean he's in my offense, but he he gets his own, and he's he's seen the end zone at least once a game, so. He's not the worst pickup. He's going to at least get you 10 mm-hmm. points. So, I mean, it, it, there's plenty of guys out there uh, that you could have. So, there's really no excuse for it. Same thing with Q. He's got plenty of people in his lineup. 
seems like he has the same lineup as he did last week, so he didn't really put much thought into it. Uh, I don't see LQ Noble coming back. He's got 24 points, which is we've seen the highest that we've seen, and this is probably the lowest that we've seen out of anybody in fantasy uh, with 24.24. So uh, Q is definitely going to get the win here. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to, you know, these two guys. Yep. Yeah, I think that game is pretty much uh, game set and match there. So congrats to Q. Um, you know, even uh, having people on buys, you know, set it with block on win. So, um, you know, it's kind of the same thing we talk about every week. And, you know, moving forward, uh, you know, we're going to have to stop with the warnings and just take action. Yeah. So unfortunately, you know, that's kind of where it's at. So if you're listening and you want to be a part of the league, which, you know, everybody should want to, uh, and you're in the league, so you should take advantage of being in it, you know, um, hopefully you kind of get that resolved. But if not, sorry, but we got to do what we got to do. Yeah, and uh, like I said, we're putting in a lot of work, so it would be nice for people to just pay attention, do the bare minimum. But it is what it is. We're going to move on to the uh, next week's schedule. And we usually do three stardoms and sit uh, What we're going to do is we're going to do one for each position besides kicker. Um, if you want to start off, who's your quarterback uh, start of the week? So my start of the week is solely based on a um, matchup here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm going with Russell Wilson, uh, the Seahawks. So the Seahawks are up against the Rams. Mm-hmm. Um, so as we see, the Rams defense gets one of the most uh, highest point counts against them every single week. And I think Russell Wilson, and whether it's on the ground or in the air, I think he's going to have a field day. So um, we got Russell Wilson. Make sure you're starting him this week. Oh, I, I like that start uh, just based on the, uh, the matchup there. Uh, my start is going to go to Baker Mayfield. Uh, the Packers are going up against the Cleveland Browns. I could expect a high-scoring game, uh, not a lot of defense on either side, so I expect the Browns uh, and Baker Mayfield to put up a lot of points. Um, yeah, that's that's. I think that's the the good matchup right there. Um, who do you got on your sit list for quarterbacks? So for uh, quarterbacks, and that is a good uh, that is a good play uh, for Sardin for Baker Mayfield. I know he was struggling early on in the season, but. We saw he had a, a bounce back week this past week. Um, mm-hmm. So I think he could continue that momentum. Um, so this is a little bit of a surprise because uh, this quarterback is having a really good season, uh, high interception count, but for the most part leads the league in passing yards in Josh Allen. Um, mm-hmm. But he's going up against the Patriots defense this week. So yeah. I think, you know, despite uh, maybe being able to put up yardage, I think he's going to throw up. Uh, even more interceptions, and I think by the end of the game, he's going to have more interceptions uh, for the season than he does touchdowns. So I think for this week, uh, I would hold off and see if you can get uh, a quarterback that's on the waivers, and maybe you have him on your roster already. That kind of fits a better matchup. Yeah, I I agree with that. That's a tough matchup for the Bills. Um, I'm going to go with uh, with somebody that usually wouldn't be a sit Um Tom Brady for the Buccaneers up against the Washington football team. I don't like the matchup, and I don't like the fact that Tom Brady has no throw power left. Uh, he's pretty much a shell of himself in this game. He got regressed uh, a ton. So, yeah, Tom Brady's going to be that choice, but the real choice, the easy choice, is the Chiefs and the Steelers. You're going to sit Patrick Mahomes, but... If we're not taking the easy easy route, I'm gonna go with Tom Brady uh, of the Buccaneers up, up against the Redskins for the sit Uh Yeah, that's that's an interesting choice. Um, and we'll kind of when I get into my uh, sit for defense, I'll kind of go into more why I think that's an interesting choice. So we'll kind of wait till then. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into running backs. I'll uh, give my running back start of the week. And what I'm going to go with uh, this week is Alvin Kamara. Uh, go figure. Um, definitely get him in your starting lineup. Um, he's going up against the Jets. I think he's got a favorable matchup here. And I definitely take Alvin Kamara. And uh, a quiet waiver wire pickup if uh, somebody needs a uh, running back, uh, LQ Noble. Um, go after Le'Veon Bell. 
So Le'Veon Bell's been getting a lot of love in that Jets offense. Yeah, he he, he definitely has. I think that would be a very smart way to pick up. Um, and then for mine, we kind of touched on it already. C.J. Verdell, the Steelers, got hurt. He's out for a couple of weeks. And now he's already picked this guy up, and I think he's definitely going to start him and Anthony mm-hmm. McFarlane. Uh, he came in for Verdell and had over 100 yards of rushing and a couple touchdowns. Mm-hmm. So it's very possible that uh, McFarlane even gets a depth story. Uh, yeah. You know, once we advance to week five. So if he does, we could see even more production out of him because Drama's definitely going to want to target him and, you know, complete that depth story. So I think that was a great pickup and I think he's the even better start. Oh, yeah, that's that's for sure. Um, the Steelers, that, that matchup, I mean, it's tough to pick anybody, uh, tough mm-hmm. not to pick anybody in that matchup, to be honest. Um, when you're looking at the Sidhams, I'm going to go with uh, the Cardinals, Naheem Hines, up against the Detroit Lions, Cookie Boy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this is a favorable matchup for uh, the Lions. They only have to focus on stopping one thing, and that's the run from the Cardinals. And when a user like Cookie Boy uh, has only one thing to focus on, um, he's definitely going to accomplish that. So I think this is a tough matchup for Naheem Hines this week. So he's going to be my Sidham. Yeah, I think, definitely think it's going to be a tough matchup, but I think with a guy like Naheem Hines and the way Goose uses him, mm-hmm. um, I think you're going to get points out of him in the passing game. So I think Cookie's definitely going to key in on him, but um, I think no matter who it is, when you have a fast running back, um, they're always a danger. But um, I think based upon matchups, that is a good pick to sit. Mm-hmm. And then um, just looking at a guy who really hasn't produced much, this season, and you would kind of expect him to. Um, the, Nick Chubb of the Browns, um, which I'm kind of surprised to see. He's only got 262 rushing yards for the season and three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, and then two of those touchdowns came last week. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, granted, he's going up, up against the Packers, so I think he could produce here, but just based on, um, you know, how HG has been using him, I, I think he's a sit for this week. That's a that's a good one. Uh, definitely under underperforming this season. Um, don't know mm-hmm. why exactly. I know last week he had a decent week. I think he had nine carries for like eighty something yards and a touchdown. So he didn't really run it much, but he he definitely was getting a big chunk of chunks of yardage when he did. So I like that sit him. Um, moving on to the wide receivers, who do you get as a starter? So this is a guy who uh, was. Definitely overused last season, um, and he will make be making his debut in week five. And I have John Ross. I think the Bengals uh, have kind of been underperforming this season, and I think uh, having Ross plus Jalen Waddle is really going to open it up. Plus, they play the Raiders this week. I think that's a great matchup for uh, the Bengals offense. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he's also getting Joe Mixon back as well. So you know, there's a threat at running back. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he's going to want to uh, make a statement with Ross against the uh, Raiders. Oh, yeah, especially with the way the season has started for him, uh, having a tough go mm-hmm. of it. I, I feel like this is a breakout game for him. So I like that starter. I'm going to go with uh, – I'm going to match your quarterback of the week, and I'm going to go with his number one target in DK Metcalf up against the Los Angeles Rams. Um, I know um, that the Rams have Richard Sherman and um, Jalen Ramsey, but you got to pick one, Tyler Lockett or DK Metcalf to cover, and I think DK Metcalf is going to get Richard Sherman a lot, and I like uh, DK Metcalf with his speed and athleticism to beat Richard Sherman over the top. Yeah, that's a that's a great pick, and actually I, I do have Metcalf. I actually have Metcalf and John Ross. And I was struggling to see who I wanted to start. Um, and I, I'm going to go with Ross just because it doesn't look like he, uh, Mally's really targeting Metcalf. Um, we saw Lockett was on the trade block. Yeah. Um, so you figure maybe Metcalf was going to get um, you know more targets. But so far, he's only got nine for 149 and one touchdown, mm-hmm. whereas Tyler Lockett has 13 for 291. So, But, you know, it's against the Rams. So both of them guys could... Mm-hmm. Uh, get a lot of points this uh, this week. Yes, exactly. Uh, who do you got for a sit on wide receiver? 
So from my side, um, this is another guy who, when you hear the name, uh, you know, you don't think of speed, but you definitely think he has production in uh, wide receiver Adam Thielen for the Vikings. Um, uh, when you look at the Vikings uh, stat count, uh, Thielen is number five um, in receptions for the team with only nine, and he doesn't even have 100 yards. So Thielen has, you know, he's an X factor, 91 overall. Um, you know, he just doesn't seem like he's in the game plan anymore. Um, so, you know, Justin Jefferson and Tajay Sharp seem to be the guys that, uh, you know, uh, Z-Star is targeting. So I would kind of uh, avoid Adam Thielen, mm -hmm. and I don't, I don't think uh, he should really be on anybody's team. Yeah, Adam Thielen's not having a, uh, a good start. It's, it's more about the speed, and I don't think he's, he's got that speed um, to really mm -hmm. be a threat. Um, what my sit -em, I'm actually going to go with, um, uh, I'm going to go with the Buccaneers again, and I'm going to go with, uh, Chris Godwin for the Buccaneers. I, I mean, I like the Washington football's defense, and, uh, I think they're going to be solid against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, I could be completely wrong, uh, wrong, but I just watched a full game of the Washington football team up against the Cowboys, who I think have the better quarterback at the t at this time. And um, I think their defense is going to have a good matchup against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They got fast corners. Uh, they got a lot of uh, depth in that defense. So I like this matchup for them. Yeah, I think uh, that's definitely an interesting matchup. Um... I think the Buccaneers have been underperforming uh, so far this season. Um, you know, they have been scoring at least 30 points a game. Um, so it'd be interesting how they kind of attack that Washington defense. Um, but I definitely think he has way too many weapons and no one person is really getting targeted the most. So having any of those uh, wide receivers on your team is always a, um, you know, kind of a boom or bust week for yeah. them. Yeah, exactly. Um, now moving on to the tight ends. Uh, for a startup on tight ends, I actually have uh, Devin Ossie Ossie. Um, he hasn't been used much uh, much this this season, but he's he's a security blanket for the New England Patriots, and I think that's gonna show uh, show heavy in this game. Uh, last time he played the Buffalo Bills, it was a tough uh, tougher matchup, and it was a close matchup, and I think. Before he was trying to do different things with his offense, I think he goes back to what works and uses Devin Asiasi like he did last season, and uh, he has a good game up against the Bills. Uh, yeah. So for my stardom, um, I also had uh, Devin Asiasi. So we agree. I'm sorry, no, I did not have that. Sorry, <laughs> Devin Asiasi was my setup. He was your um, sit -em. That's why I wanted, I actually wanted, yes, I wanted to start with that one and then go to my stardom because it was interesting that he's your uh, stardom. So with Asi Asi, he only has two catches for 30 yards on the season. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's one of the, probably the most underperforming tight end. Um, and I think, granted, this Patriots offense seems to really just be getting everybody the ball. And yep. Asi Asi is probably the last person to get the ball. So uh, I think you definitely have an interesting take. And, um, you know, uh, the Patriots and the Bills already played once this season. Um, I know there was some controversy with that uh, game. But um, I, I don't know. I think Asi Asi is kind of a, a second thought in this offense. I think it's a run-heavy offense. And, you know, maybe Asi Asi, if he can get them open. Uh, but I think he's one of the last people to really get any looks. Yeah. Um, but going in with my stardom for the week, um, I have Kyle Pitts of the Rams. Uh, he, I know that we don't really talk about the Rams in a positive light as much, but Pitts leads the Rams and catches uh, in yards with 224, and uh, he's tied for uh, first in touchdowns. So I think uh, the Rams offense kind of goes through Pitts. I think he's uh, in a good uh I think in this matchup, his defense is going to be so hot, but I think he's going to have to throw the ball, and he's going to look for Pitts almost every single down. Yeah, and I like Pitts um, as a as a just looking at him. I I, I, I enjoy like you know the the way he plays. Um, I watched a couple of games of the LA Rams, and 
Um, he would get a lot of catches over the middle, and then he would just truck dudes over the middle and uh, gain a bunch of yardage after the catch. And I like the way the way that plays. I think I think that's a good stardom, a really underrated stardom, uh, because you never really talk about the Rams in a positive light, like you mentioned. So I I like that pick. Um, when it comes to my sit uh this week for my sit uh I didn't have one for a tight end, so I'm just going off the top of my head. Um, so when we're talking about our sit I think uh, Travis Kelsey, which is an easy pick uh, mm-hmm. in that Chiefs offense, is definitely a sit Uh No one is overall. You think Travis, Travis Kelsey is somebody you start every week, but in that Chiefs offense, you're not getting much out of uh, Travis Kelsey and barely enough out of Tyreek Hill. Yeah, no, I think that's a good choice. I think we're at the point where I think we talk about the Chiefs. At least one person on the Chiefs is a sit on almost every single week. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Travis Kelsey, he does lead the, the Chiefs in receptions um, and his second in yards, but he doesn't have any touchdowns. But that offense is so unpredictable. Um, you know, you don't know who's going to get the ball. Yeah. Um, and if you know, even if they get the ball, they're really going to do anything with it. So I think it's pretty safe to say, you know, uh, it's hard to start any of them, but if you're going to start any of them, Tyreek Hill is, you know, so dynamic that, it, you know, it makes him want to be a, almost a almost start every week. But yeah, he's the only one. else on this offense is a sit on. Yeah. yeah, yeah so he, I think that's a great choice. Yeah, he's definitely the only one to even trust remotely. He'll get you at least... 10 points if that if you're lucky mm. um but let's move on to the defenses uh stardom i know you talked about your sit tight end already so we'll move on to the defense mm-hmm. who is your stardom defense this week so my stardom defense i had um i actually had the seahawks defense as mm-hmm. my stardom defense and i know uh we don't typically talk about the seahawks as having a a good defense. I think they're in usually uh, a back and forth games, but again, I don't trust this Rams offense. And I think that we've already talked about who he's going to go to. Um, I think if Matt keys in on, on pits, I think he's going to force some turnovers and you figure they, they already have uh, some hitters in Bobby Wagner and Jamal Adams. Um, you know, so he's trying to go to the tight end across the middle. I think that's going to be pretty dangerous. Um, I think Mally has a great chance to get, uh, uh, interceptions as well as forced fumbles um, and then take any of those for uh, for six and then along with points wise I don't see this Rams offense really scoring that much points yeah I agree with that that's a that's a good choice um, especially against the Rams who have been giving up the most points to fantasy defenses throughout the whole season um, I'm going to go mm-hmm. a little off the board and I'm going to go with the Lions defense up against the Cardinals um, mm-hmm. but uh, like I mentioned before uh, that when I put Naeem Hines as a sit running back, uh, I really like that Detroit Lions defense. Uh, besides the Patriots, that's probably the next best defense, in my opinion, uh, in the league. Uh, but it is a pretty big gap between the Patriots defense and the Lions defense. Um, but given the matchup of the users, I think the Lions defense is definitely a sit- uh, stardom for this week. Um, and that's pretty much it. I could see a lot of... Uh, either fumbles or interceptions. I could see the Cardinals getting down early and having them air it out, and then that leads to a lot of uh, mistakes. Um, who do you got for your sit on defense? So for my sit and this goes with, uh, you know, your your choice earlier, um, I have the football team as my sit this week. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the Buccaneers have been in uh, a few close games. I think they're going to bounce back this week, Um, you know, um, and I I don't think that the football team is going to be able to, especially, you know, they lost against the Cowboys last week. Um, The Cowboys put up 42 points on them. Um, I think they're going to try to to bounce back, but looking at their past two games, you know, they almost lost to the Eagles. I think they won that game uh, in the last minute. Um, So I, I look for this game to be a shootout. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty high scoring, and I think that's going to negatively impact the football team's defense. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, that football team, it's it's a hit or miss. I mean, I've watched some games, and I like the way they play. And uh, mm-hmm. the Buccaneers offense, um, they had a tough matchup last week. or was it, the, it was a week before because they wanted to buy. Um, the week before, who they played? 
Yeah, they played the Falcons. They, they lost 36 to 40. Yeah, they lost 36 to 40. I believe Brady had a few turnovers that game, and I think that's what I was thinking about. He had three. Yeah, so Brady had three turnovers. I mean, Brady seems to be throwing a lot more interceptions than usual for that offense. Um, I want to take a look at Brady. It's his stats on the season. I can't. It looks like he's thrown uh, like seven interceptions. So he's throwing um, center seven interceptions three in three games. So he's averaging a little over two interceptions a game. Um, mm-hmm. I I think that's going to continue. I think he's having a rough time finding that offense, and with Brady having an eighty three throw power compared to his 90 plus or whatever he had last season. Uh, I think it's really tough for him. Um, my sit him for uh, the defense this week is going to be, uh, it's going to be the, the Tennessee Titans. Don't, uh, I don't like the matchup. Uh, you're coming off a big win against the uh, yeah. Miami Dolphins. And I think you got you got a little wind in your sails, and I don't I don't like this matchup for the Tennessee Titans. I think it's going to be a shootout. Um, I wouldn't start either defense on this side, uh, but I definitely want to start the Tennessee Titans defense, especially with the way you were playing uh, last week. I think it's going to continue on to this week. Yeah, no, I appreciate the the vote of confidence. Um, yeah, it was it was an interesting week three. I think Deshaun Watson had the most interceptions he's thrown in a game since week one of season one when he threw like six. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it was definitely rough. Um, got down early and got away from uh, what I wanted to do. Um, I'm going to go into that game with a different game plan. Um, so, if, you know, hopefully keep it a lot closer than it, than it was. Um, but uh, I think that's definitely an interesting choice. Yeah, that uh, I like to go for interesting choice, not the run of the mill choice. Only with the the Chiefs, the one Chiefs choice that I had. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's pretty much gonna do it for this week. Um, I we gotta enter the fantasy points for this uh, this last game that was just played, and then I gotta update the standings and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, um, that's gonna be it for me this week. I don't know if you got anything else to add. Uh, yes, the one thing I did want to add was, um, so for everybody listening, um, you know, get your lineups in, um, but the Ravens, the Dolphins, the Broncos, and the Falcons are all on bye weeks this mm-hmm. week. And based um, on what... That, good luck this week. Yeah, and based on what just happened, they, they need to know that information if they watch or yes, don't watch. Um, we don't want another situation with a bunch of guys on bye weeks. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much gonna do it for me and Fallen. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. We appreciate you guys tuning in, and we appreciate the guys that are actually trying in the fantasy league uh, besides ourselves. Um, but yeah, that's gonna do it for us. Uh, thank you for listening. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we are out of here.